The Kings Park Psychiatric Center is a part of Long Island history that is extremely interesting and bizarre in many ways. The initial town that the psychiatric center resides in was named St. Johnland, which was a rural farming community and didn't have much going on in it. In the mid-1800s, they had one main road running through it that connected Smithtown and Huntington, and not many people stayed there and wasn't even displayed on maps as a town. The railroad company was eventually the ones to name a stop, Kings Park, after a park in Jamaica, which is how it got its name. Kings Park now has over 20,000 residents because of the railroad, and ever since it was constructed, Kings Park has had a much bigger increase in population. What we know as Kings Park today brought up many of the goods and services from Connecticut from across the Nesequake River. Many of the organizations in the city wanted to move out due to overpopulation, and Kings Park became an area that a lot of businesses and people moved to, which is the initial reason why the psych center was created. When the center opened up, the facility needed to be self-sustainable because there was no electricity or anything they could rely on. Once the center began to be the main center of the town, it took on the name Kings Park. Originally, psych centers would be keeping the mentally ill they housed hidden in the dark and locked up, although Kings Park was a big improvement where they would let them work and still experience life outside of cement walls. The building was designed to be an oasis of sanity and the construction of it was extremely different to everyday mentally ill hospitals. It is considered to be a much more modern approach to housing and keeping these people healthy and to try to make them comfortable. Occupational therapy was extremely important to patients' mental health and for them to achieve a better adjustment to the world outside of a psych center. When the hospital was created, it also created many jobs in the town, making it easier for people to move into the area and quickly find work. Close to 90% of the labor in the psychiatric center was the patients when it came down to the electricity, farming, working in the slaughterhouses, mowing the lawns, preparing the food, and even to making their own cheese. The patients who did all this work got $15 a month, where if adjusted for inflation from 1850 to today, would be worth around $420. Later into the 70s, they got rid of the patient la labor and instead hired more people. Most patients would still want to work and loved having a form of self-worth, although it was taken away from them. They would often just wander the day room and wouldn't have much to do. This ultimately seems to be the decline of the psych center's ability to give the best opportunity to the patients. Into the late 1930s, they began to warehouse the patients, and this is where they formed Building 93, which is the notorious building for the site. They built very big buildings and had close to 9,000 people at the psych center. Close to around a third of the patients at the psychiatric center had some kind of organic illness, which meant that they would not be able to recover from their mental state. 
Due to how far back the knowledge about these illnesses were during the times, they were unable to properly diagnose the patients. Sadly, not understanding the illnesses is the cause for a lot of the treatment methods that they used on patients. These medical treatments consisted of surgical lobotomies. A lobotomy consists of severing a portion of the brain. They would render them unconscious by using electricity convulsions, which would knock them out unconscious for around 8 minutes, although it can never be completely accurate, which often caused patients to wake up in the middle of the procedure. Once the patient is out, they would push back the eyelid of the man or woman, and stick a long metal object into the top of the eye socket, and then proceed to take a mallet against the metal object, which is often a nice pick, to get past the layer of bone protecting the brain, to reach the front lobes of the brain. During these times, transorbital lobotomies were considered a cure for schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and other mental illnesses. Other aggressive therapies were created as well, which they attempted to use to combat mental illnesses. Towards the 1950s, they began to institute drugs into the facilities. Mental hospitals were the second most funded thing on the New York State budget after education.
They attempted to find a quick fix to these institutions, and believed if they were able to heavily fund the psych centers, they would be able to find solutions and solve problems to mental illnesses. Although it was soon discovered there is no easy cure to these mental illnesses, and they began to deinstitutionalize the mental hospitals. The most humane way to combat mental illnesses is to return them to the community with the least amount of restriction. Now that there are better drugs, it also makes it much easier. This is when we start to see a decrease of institutional population, which was in the mid to late 1950s. Now that the center is closed, it has become an area which is really interesting to see and tour, although its demolition has begun and the state plans to eventually demolish it entirely.